120 million years ago, northeast China was a very strange place. There were many bird-like dinosaurs like Changua raptor that was heavily feathered and had wings, dinosaur-like birds known as enantiornithes that could fly but still had teeth, and there were ceratopsians that ran on two legs. But hidden away in the mild conifer forests in the region was a mammal that questions everything that was once thought about Mesozoic wildlife. It was a large carnivorous mammal called Repinomamus, and it ate dinosaurs. It was thought that mammals didn't and couldn't evolve into large animal niches during this period because of competition with dinosaurs, and Repinomamus thoroughly proves this wrong. Repinomamus is known from a pretty well-preserved fossil discovered in the Ixian formation in China, which would have been a mostly forested habitat. Upon its discovery, it was noticed that where the animal's stomach would have been located was a small baby dinosaur called Psittacosaurus, a distant relative of Triceratops. This is very good evidence that at least some Mesozoic animals ate dinosaurs. However, there is no indication that the dinosaur was actively hunted or just scavenged. Repinomamus, like many mammals from this time period, had unusual teeth, not really seen in any mammals today, meaning that comparisons with living species is very difficult, not offering clues for how this animal ate. The one thing that was for sure was that they had the sharp teeth of a carnivore, making it at least plausible that they were dinosaur hunters. There are many mammals predating Repinomamus that adopted to carnivory, but these mammals usually occupied small animal niches, like being insectivorous. But Repinomamus was one of the first mammals ever to specialise into eating vertebrate prey. The Psittacosaurus that was found inside the specimen's stomach was tiny, but it is possible that it could have eaten even larger prey. The specimen that contained the eaten dinosaur was the smallest species of Repinomamus known, the Repinomamus robustus. However, there was another much larger species called Repinomamus giganticus that had a skull that was almost twice the size of the smaller species. This mammal was very large by Mesozoic standards. Repinomamus giganticus probably weighed as much as 14 kilos. There are some other mammal contenders that are possibly as large or even larger than this, but Repinomamus was the largest mammal from this time period known from relatively complete remains. It was about the size of a spaniel, but probably had an appearance that was more badger-like, and would have walked like an echidna due to its primitive sprawling posture. Repinomamus, like many Cretaceous mammals, shared both primitive and modern features, but was not a direct ancestor of any living mammal group. We often think of Mesozoic mammals as the ancestors of the mammals we have today, and although this is often true, it is not always the case. The common ancestor of the three living groups of mammals, marsupials, monotremes and placentals, and all of its descendants are referred to as the crown mammals, and diverged from each other as long as 200 million years ago in the Triassic. Some families of Mesozoic mammals predate this divergence, and many other families are interwoven with the living mammals and have broken away on their own evolutionary pathways at different times. Repinomamus was from a very diverse group of Mesozoic mammals known as Eutraconodonta that were more closely related to marsupials and mammals than they were to monotremes. This means that this 125 million year old Repinomamus is more closely related to you than you are to a platypus. They may have laid eggs, but they most likely would have had a reproductive system similar to that of modern day marsupials due to being more closely related to them. Repinomamus possessed epipubic bones, which is a bone arrangement found in marsupials and monotremes, but not placentals. Although the function of epipubic bones is uncertain, what is known is that they stop animals from being able to have long gestation periods. The bones stiffen the torso, meaning there isn't much room for fetal development, and so placental mammals lost them at some point in their evolution to allow for the development of larger babies. These marsupial-like mammals were the most common type in the Cretaceous, and they wouldn't be taken over by placentals until after the dinosaurs had gone extinct. Marsupials we know today would have branched off sometime after Repinomamus, but before developing placentas. So although they may have reproduced in a similar way, Repinomamus was a lot more primitive. Repinomamus was from a family called Gobiconodontids that had many members exceeding 2 kilos or more and were commonly around the size of a rabbit or larger. This may not seem like much, but the average weight of a mammal in the Mesozoic was probably less than a kilo. One individual in this family, known as Gobiconodon, was about the size of a house cat, and like Repinomamus, was a carnivore. As there were quite a few large mammalian carnivores operating in China at the same time, but rarely anywhere else, they may have been occupying a niche that was filled by dinosaurs, perhaps like a small theropod in other parts of the world. Repinomamus and the other Gobiconodonts mostly went extinct in the mid-Cretaceous. Their disappearance coincided with the appearance of a group of new, more modern mammals known as Delta Theridoid, that were more closely related to marsupials, and although there is no research confirming this, it is likely they were outcompeted by these newcomers. 
and there is evidence that the delta thoroid group also fed on dinosaurs. The broken off jaw of a very small theropod dinosaur known as Archaeonithoids was found with bite marks on it. It is thought that the jaw was bitten off by a small weasel sized member of this group called Delta Theridium and eaten. So it was not just Repinomamus, and many mammals in the Cretaceous were starting to adopt a more carnivorous lifestyle while growing larger to eat larger prey. The Gobiconodontids and the Delta Theridoids may have occupied niches that put them in conflict with dinosaurs in their territory that they may have competed with for food and also very occasionally eaten. It is possible that Mesozoic mammals may have had advantages over predatory dinosaurs of a similar size range. Dinosaurs had hollow bones, meaning they were often much lighter compared to their size than mammals. This feature nearly always offered them an advantage over mammals, but if you're really small, being a little heavier might actually help with the defense from little dinosaurs. We tend to view prehistory in blocks, that the Cretaceous was the time of the dinosaurs and mammals didn't rise up until their extinction, and although this is mostly correct, prehistory is never that simple. These discoveries show that Mesozoic mammals had already started to evolve into more carnivorous niches, and by the late Cretaceous could even compete with little dinosaurs. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and would like to be updated of future uploads, consider subscribing. Many thanks to my patrons for supporting me, especially Greenforce and Fuzzleworth.